Hi, welcome to another episode of Road Back to India. I was actually planning on watching Lagan for this week's episode and like seeing what I can learn from that movie because it was recommended by you guys and I know it's an old classic, but little did I know, Little Miss Innocent, that that movie lasts for four hours. So I have um, I have it on my laptop and I'm going to watch it in the plane to Curacao. If you're watching this right now, I'm in Curacao. Hello, you need to check out my Instagram for the pictures and the vlogs will be up next week, of course. But for now, I am going to answer some of your questions regarding to India because I asked you guys if you have any questions and you did, so let's just do that. If you are an Indian, please feel free to help me with the answers. Like my knowledge of India is of course limited if you've been born there and bred and lived there all your life. I've just traveled through India in two months. So, you know, help me out. So let's start off with Diana Rose's question. And her questions are, you have multiple questions actually. What are your tips for introverted slash shy people who'd like to try traveling alone, especially for women? I heard that in India, it's normal to be asked to have your photos taken with them. Is this okay to you? Or you would have to decline to have your photos taken. Do you think it's okay for foreigners to wear Indian clothing like salwar kameez? Uh, yeah. So I am an introvert and uh, an introvert is definitely something different than a shy person. It just means you need a lot of time for yourself to recharge your batteries. Being shy is something different and I think you can work on that. I think India is maybe one of the best countries for shy people because Indian people are so curious and they will ask you a lot of questions and they have no shame in their game. And I, I actually love that a lot about them. They, they will approach you, but also, like, if you don't want something, they're very respectful towards foreigners. So, usually, I didn't mind taking my picture, uh, having my picture taken with someone, especially if it's, like, families or kids or women or something like that. If it's a group of guys, I will follow Rachel's advice. She's from the blog Hippie in Heels. And um, I will only take a group picture. I rarely take a picture with an Indian guy alone because, you know, Indians are very good with Photoshop and they can say like you're their girlfriend or they can Photoshop a naked body or something like that. And I'm like, mm, no, let's not do that. So um, if you don't want something, you can just tell people they are very respectful. And if you're shy... Um, Indian people will help you deal with that. <laughs> uh, is it okay for foreigners to wear Indian clothing like salwar kameez? Yes, salwar kameez is totally okay. But a sari is, I think, a little bit too much. It, that, that's more reserved for Indian women. If you are going to a wedding, an Indian wedding, then it's okay, I guess. But in, you know, in normal daily life, a salwar kameez is, is totally okay. Merel van Duin, she would like to travel to India when she's a little bit older, because now she's 15 years old. Wow, that's such a cool prospect. And her question is, which part of India would you recommend to go first uh, when you have never been to India around Kochi, Mumbai, Delhi, or maybe other cities like Bangalore and Jaipur? Well, I originally planned on starting out in the north, and I've heard that's like a pretty tough region to start out, but most foreigners start there because Delhi is there and Taj Mahal and yada yada yada. However, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, a very, very fr friendly Indian guy who was studying in Singapore and I met him in Thailand because uh, he was on vacation there and he told me like, no, if this is your first time in India, start out in the south and coincidentally things added up I was in Malaysia I was in Kuala Lumpur and it was also cheaper to fly to Kochi Kerala than to fly to the north so that's why I started out in the south and I think that was the best decision ever I think somebody else also asked me like is there a massive difference between the north and the south and I think this goes for every country in the world like even in the Netherlands we have a, uh, we have a massive difference between the north and the south people in the south uh, South tend to be more relaxed, more friendly, life is um, moving at a slower pace. And I think the same goes for India, at least from what I've seen. I've only been to Kochi in the South, but like compared to the North, the pace is definitely lower. The people are, I don't know, they're, they're a little less aggressive to sell you things and stuff like that. 
even though the North wasn't that aggressive as people told me it would be like, ooh, no, 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 it's fine. North was fine as well. But starting out in the South is definitely an advice I would give to someone who is going for the first time in India. Okay, so Oka asks, hello Oka, what's your favorite Indian food? This is a really tough choice, but um, somebody else already answered paneer for sure. <laughs> yes, I really, really love paneer and I eat it as often as I can, especially because I'm a vegetarian and I don't eat meat. But I think like if I had to pick one dish, I, I like Indian food, I haven't eaten it in India. It was on the island of Rayleigh in Thailand. It was made by originally Indian people. They were from Delhi and it was by far the best paneer butter masala I have ever eaten in my life. Until this day, that dish is unrivaled. If you ever go to Rayleigh, Thailand, make sure to eat at the restaurant, like it's in the middle of the island, Koh Inor. Oh, so good. Makeoffs ask, what was your motivation the first time that you went to India? Well, I... I've actually been in love with India ever since I was, I think, 14, 15. My best friend, Nadine, she is half, um, well, half Indian, Hindustan, they usually call it, but her dad was born in Suriname. I had another best friend for 20 years. I'm not friends with her anymore, but she was totally like uh, Hindustan. They always watched uh, Indian movies. Her father was a very good cook. I also had uh, an Indian boyfriend when I was 17. I got exposed to Indian culture from quite a young age and I loved everything about it. I loved like the food. I loved the colors. I loved like the, the mentality of the people and everything I saw in those movies. It's just so beautiful. So I wanted to see that with my own eyes. So when I grew older, I read all these stories about India and being the, the crazy country that it is. And I thought like, this is the country where I think my adventurous spirit will finally, you know, find enough adventure to be at peace or something like that. And, and that's why I wanted to see it with my own eyes to see if it was really as crazy as people said it is. And I, I think it is crazy, but for me, it's in a very positive way. Like I said, my nature is very adventurous and I love new learning new things. I love meeting new people. I love learning about new culture. And India is like, like the complete opposite of what I was raised with. And there is so much for me to learn in India. So that's that's what drew me to the country. It's like, let's say like it's, it's kind of like the Mount Everest of traveling usually for people. But for me, it was, it was, it was like coming home. I, I love it so much. So yeah, that's what drew me to India. I, I thought I would love it a lot. I thought I would find peace there in terms of enough adventure to satisfy my adventurous spirit. And um, yeah, that's why I wanted to go there. The final questions are from the Belgian traveler. Are there certain cities where you felt more unsafe than in others? Uh, yes, there were, but it's not like I was afraid to go out. In Delhi, you can definitely feel like it's the Wild West. If you take Delhi seriously, you can have a really, really good time. But I think most people have no idea how the Wild West feels. So that's why Delhi is so overwhelming. Um, I was already traveling in India for like five weeks and I've already been to Mumbai and, and lived in Kochi for a month and everything. And I came to Delhi and I still experienced like a massive shock. I was so happy. I was uh, just on Facebook Messenger with Anjit, who is originally born in Delhi. Um, in order to prevent a panic attack because it, it was definitely overwhelming. And I also arrived at in the dark and there were like all these, um, you know, aggressive rickshaw drivers. They're not aggressive, they're just hustling for their children and everything. But it was just such a massive difference to what, I've ex what I had experienced up until that point that I felt unsafe in that moment. But once I got used to Delhi, like after a half a day, I was like, this, this place is all right. And that's it. I'm going to wrap this Q&A up because otherwise this video will be too long. If I didn't answer your question yet, I will take it to a part two and I will for sure answer it. If you have more questions about India, 
please uh, uh, put them down in the comments below. If you like this video, please put a thumbs up. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, I am going back to India at the end of September. And if you want to come with me or, you know, just enjoy my adventures, click that subscribe button and then we'll be traveling together. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.